Hey guys, John V here from Phone Reno. Right now you're watching a video comparison between the HTC Droid DNA and the Samsung Galaxy S3. Two very impressive handsets. Of course, we know that the Droid DNA is the newer handset, so naturally it's blessed with the more impressive spec sheet, like the 1080p high resolution display and a quad core processor, but still remaining a very relevant device in this day and age is the Galaxy S3. It is a well-rounded performer, as we've seen in past uh, comparisons and even in the review. So we're going to find out how these two compare against one another. We can't say we're gravitating towards one design more than the other, just because there are many likable aspects with both. Uh, they're fairly, fairly similar in terms of overall size, quite cumbersome to hold with one hand. Of course, the Galaxy S3 is just a smidgen lighter and thinner than its rival, but it's barely noticeable. They have some decent construction with both, but they utilize different choice of materials. The uh, Droid DNA opts for a uh, soft touch finish versus the polycarbonate with the hyper glaze finish with the Galaxy S3. They both maintain a very clean appearance at all times though. Easily capturing our attention from the onset are their sharp looking displays. The Jordania really has something impressive. It's a 5 inch 1080p Super LCD 3 panel in there and its, mes its resolution measures in at 1080 by 1920 pixels and its pixel density is an impressive 441 pixels per inch. On the other hand, the uh, Galaxy S3 still has a sharp looking display. It's a 4.8 inch HD Super AMOLED panel with a resolution of 720 by 1280 pixels and its pixel density is 360 six pixels per inch so there's a huge disparity between the two but honestly as we look at the two it's hardly recognizable even though the Droid DNA utilizes the more favorable RGB pixel arrangement versus the Pentile one in play with the Galaxy S3. It's only until we look up the close and personal that we notice the uh, detail su superiority with the Droid DNA's display as we're able to make out fine text in the web browser a lot easier with the uh, Galaxy S3 but from a normal viewing distance it's hardly recognizable which one's better. Now the uh, Galaxy S3 utilizes uh, an AMOLED panel versus the uh the uh, Super LCD 3 uh, panel in the uh, Droid DNA. You get more realistic and accurate looking colors with the Droid DNA versus the saturated color tones, which gives the uh, Galaxy S3 a little bit of a showroom wow factor. It really stands out for that. Uh, but when it comes to outdoor visibility, hands down, the Droid DNA has it, whereas the uh, uh, Galaxy S3, its brightness output isn't as bright, so it tends to wash out and makes it very difficult to view the uh, display. But we gotta say that the AMOLED panel still has the slightly better viewing angles as it's able to maintain its clarity. There's still some accidental press as seen with the Droid DNA's trio capacitive Android buttons just because they're placed towards the edge so our fingers kind of uh, accidentally press them every now and then whereas with the uh, Galaxy S3 it relies on a combination of a single home button, a physical one, and the uh, capacitive buttons around the side so it's less prone to that. Above their displays, we spot their earpieces, their uh, notification LED lights. It's in the uh, in the earpiece on the Droid DNA, and it's a bright one on the uh, Galaxy S3 and towards the top left. But you have another uh, LED notification light on the back with the Droid DNA. And we have the front-facing cameras. On the Galaxy S3, it's a 1.9 megapixel one versus the uh, wide-angle 2.1 megapixel uh, uh, f2.0 lens on the uh, Droid DNA. Well, it's not arguing about it. We prefer the physical buttons on the Galaxy S3 just because on the Droid DNA, both its dedicated power button and its volume controls are extremely flat to the touch and unresponsive at times too versus the more prominent and springy feel of the Galaxy S3 set. In the rear of both phones, we find the respective cameras. They're both 8 megapixels and feature LED flashes and 1080p high-definition video recording. But the Droid DNA stands out for its f2.0 lens and its backside illuminated sensor. Next to the camera of the Galaxy S3, you have the speaker, speaker phone right there. And it's placed on the, towards the bottom edge of the Droid DNA. It's worth noting that with the Droid DNA, it features an amplifier with its uh, built-in speaker. And you also get Beats audio support with it. Honestly, it's really refreshing to know that the Galaxy S3 features a removable battery and also a micro SD card slot to increase its storage capacity versus the Droid DNA, which, does, which utilizes a closed design, so there's no access to its internal battery, nor is there any way to increase its storage capacity. 
It's great knowing that both handsets are running Android 4.1.1 Jelly Bean, so it's not the latest version, but nevertheless, pretty up to date. Uh, they have two different totally uh, customized Android experience. It's a Sense 4 Plus UI on the HTC Droid DNA versus the typical Samsung Galaxy, Samsung Touch with Nature UX experience on the Galaxy S3. Now, we like the Droid DNAs for its uh, more polished looking uh, widgets. Uh, definitely a lot better looking than the uh, ones on the Galaxy S3. And you have just a little bit more personalization aspects because you could change the theme and also the skins with it. But the overall experience has to go to the Galaxy S3. For starters, we like it. Some of the connectivity features are built into the notifications panel, so you have easy access to that. On top of that, Samsung is really uh, deep in its uh, experience with things like S Voice, uh, S Beam. You have the pop up play feature and the wide host of different camera shooting modes available with it. It really enhances the overall experience, whereas Sense, it lacks some of those finer elements. In this comparison, we're testing out the Sprint version of the Galaxy S3, and we know that it features a dual-core 1.5 GHz Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Plus processor with 2 GB RAM, and we know the international version features a quad-core processor. The uh, Droid DNA, though, is more up-to-date. It features a quad-core 1.5 GHz Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Pro processor with also 2 GB RAM. And honestly, to tell you the truth, their, their performances are pretty much similar to one another, mostly responsive. Every now and then, we might see some child happiness with more processor intensive uh, tasks but when it comes to basic things such as opening up applications um, playing games surfing the web stuff like that uh, they pretty much exhibit the same response very smooth for the most part and they're very fast overall even though the Droid DNA might have a small size advantage with its larger display, uh, it doesn't prove to be any more advantageous when it comes to typing up messages with the on-screen keyboard. They're both spacious by nature with their layouts, and on top of that, they're very responsive. We also like the fact that the two keyboards have uh, quick access to some punctuations and some numbers directly from the main layout. But it's worth noting with the Galaxy S3, it utilizes some swipe-like methods just as an alternative for you. Naturally, it's awesome to find that both handsets feature LTE connectivity, so you get fast data speeds. And to tell the truth, they're both very similar with their web browsing performances. They exhibit some very smooth, buttery smooth uh, navigational controls. So pinch gestures, kinetic scrolling, pretty much instantaneous with the, with the two. They also render pages properly, and with their high-resolution displays, they add a good amount of sharpness with everything. There's nothing highly special with the presentation of their respective music players. They just follow the conventional approach just like most things out there. As far as the audio quality from their speakers though, they both produce some strong powerful tones in the loudest volume setting, but we can notice just a hint more clarity with the Joy DNA speaker, and it's worth noting that it has that built-in amplifier to really give it some strong bass tones as well, and it's also worth noting that the uh, Joy DNA features Beats audio support. Not surprisingly, both handsets are more than equipped to playing high definition videos. Now, the one we have here is encoded in XVID 1920x1080 resolutions. Thanks to the large displays, of course, more than optimum for the experience. We can't particularly say one's better than the other just because they have large sizes and, of course, high resolutions. Though the Joy DNA has the high resolution, it doesn't really uh, make that much of a difference when you're watching videos. The cool thing that we like about the Galaxy S3, though, you have the pop up play features, which uh, is quite useful as it's layered on top of whatever you're doing, so you have some multitasking elements with it. It's really difficult to say which handset delivers the better looking photos with their 8 megapixel cameras. But as a whole, they take some very exciting shots that we like. Uh, now, we compared the photos on a computer, and there's some surprises, to tell you the truth. Now, with the uh, Samsung Galaxy S3 and outdoor shots with plenty of lighting, it definitely has these sharper-looking visuals between the two, whereas with the uh, Droid DNA, it tends to have softer and more dull-looking de fine details, but it has a vibrant color reproduction, which really gives it that added appeal to its shots. Indoors under artificial lighting, we tend to notice just a little bit more washed out look with the uh, Droid DNA uh, shots. And uh, it tends to have this very airy look with it. Uh, and But in low lighting conditions, we really see the uh, the uh, advantage of that f2.0 lens in the Droid DNA as it's able to actually brighten up its shots more than the Galaxy S3, but doesn't really improve upon other aspects to just fine details. The LED flashes work very well with both handsets. Uh, they cast a good amount of lighting, but we tend to notice, again, a, a little bit more warmer color reproduction with the Droid DNA. 
Well, it might be a close race with their still image quality, but when it comes to 1080p high definition video recording quality, uh, it's a clear unanimous winner for the Samsung Galaxy S3 just because it produces the more attractive looking videos uh, between the two. Now we like it just because it maintains a high level of sharpness with its uh, production. It also is less prone to some of the uh, artifacting elements that are found with the Droid DNA. On top of that, the Droid DNA's uh, visuals just seem rather flat, um, flat and dull, uh, meaning that its fine details are just a tad soft for our taste. Call quality is pleasant and enjoyable on, with these two handsets as they produce voices on both in the line that are very clear, distinctive, and robust, uh, but we do find just some minor issues with their speakerphone quality. With the Droid DNA, it just emits some distortion at the loudest volume setting, whereas with the Galaxy S3, uh, voices have a little bit of irritating tone to them just because they're rather sharp. Considering they're packing LTE radios, they have a very vociferous appetite when it comes to battery life, and honestly, we don't find one to be any better than the other, as they pull in similar results with full charges. Uh, you'll get by through an 8-hour work shift, but by the time you'll, you get out, uh, you're going to have to recharge them right away. Being the new kit in the block, uh, some people are going to be attracted to the impressive spec sheet of the Droid DNA, but it's just a matter of, of a price point, how much you're willing to fork over to own either device. If you're willing to spend more, of course, stick with the Droid DNA just because you have the more impressive spec sheet. You have that 1080p uh, display on there, quad-core processor, you have some impressive uh, cameras both front and rear, and has also a very stylish industrial design to it, and $200, it shows its value, of course. On the other hand, the Samsung Galaxy S3, it continues to be a very relevant device in this day and age. It has a very good, well-rounded performance, um, and the uh, it's the software experience that is probably the most captivating thing between the two. It's just deeper and more comprehensive than the Sense 4 Plus experience of the Droid DNA. And you could probably find the Galaxy 3 at half the cost, $100 to your contract, probably with most places. So you have that value in that aspect. So it's really a toss-up, folks, depending on how much money you're willing to invest. Both devices are great in their own respect. So if you'd like to learn more about both handsets, guys, you can check out our website, phonerena.com. This is John V. Thanks for watching.